Thirty years after the Mercury Theater broadcast, WKBWAM, a rock and roll station in Buffalo, New York, decided to broadcast their own updated adaptation of The War of the Worlds. The broadcast itself took the Martian attack and placed it squarely in the era of Woodstock and the Vietnam War, giving it a distinct flavor of the times. Similar to the 1938 version, the WKBW program featured news stories interrupting the regular programming. KB, Total News, Bulletin! It's been reported that a large meteor has smashed it on the ground along the East River Road on Grand Island, setting off a series of fires. Several lives have been lost. KB Total News Director Don Lancer on the way to the scene. As events occurred, the programming segued into the story of Martians attacking Buffalo. Come in, Don. You're on live. You're on. Yes, Henry. It's, 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 not, it's not a meteor, Henry. It's, I'm standing on the edge of the crater right now, and I can look down into it, and uh, there are clouds of white hot steam rising from the face of what looks like a, some sort of a metallic cylindrical object. It's a very large object. It's, it's lying in the bottom of this crater. Thus, thus far, there's been no one around that I've been able to talk to to find out what it might be. It's, it's, it's hot, intense heat around this crater at the present moment, and, and I, I, just, I just don't, I can't describe it very well. I can't des- describe it all that well. Now, perhaps you can hear the sound. My God, Don, there's something crawling out of the top of this thing. Something or someone. I can see two discs of some sort. They're eyes. They, they appear to be eyes. It might well be your face for all I know. Something's wiggling out of this capsule. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, They're identical. That's what they are. I can see them now. The police lights are on them. <laughs> this thing is large. The body glistens like it's soaking wet. That face, I can hardly look at it, Don. I can hardly look at it. The eyes are black. The mouth is... It's shaped and it's dripping saliva. It's finding it very difficult to move, but it's, it's now beginning to move. The crowd's moving back. I'm moving back. I'm getting out of here. I, I can see it now. I, I can see it too. It's, oh my God. This is 393, Jim. Just what is going on out there? Now let's let's get coherent. Let's cool down. Jim, what's shaking? Hey, I'm not falling. This is it. There's some sort of a monster of sorts not too far from where we're standing right now. We've had to get out of the immediate area. We're moving back as far back as we can possibly move. Jim, can't you get to Professor Moore so we can get some facts on this thing? Hey, I tried to talk to the Professor out of moving up, but he managed to talk some Army Lieutenant into approaching this thing. The, the Lieutenant himself is carrying some sort of a, a pool, and this pool is a white handkerchief. And he and the Professor are now approaching the, this monster of good God Almighty, but him with some sort of a red beam. They burst into flames. The Professor, the Lieutenant. We're getting out of here. we got to get out of here. Despite massive promotion, people again panicked. Buffalo police received over 4,000 phone calls, and the Canadian National Guard was put on alert. And despite the fact that this was a local broadcast, more than 47 newspapers around the country carried news of the hoax.